Two weeks after my parents' divorce, my mom and I moved across Canada to start again. Overnight, I went from rodeos and line dancing to an affluent beachfront city. And at 12 years old, that was a lot for me to deal with. I remember going out with my new classmates for the first time. 17 of us were going to see a Mr. Bean movie. And as usual, I had on my denim jacket. Um, it kind of felt like the preteen version of a Bush Tucker trial. Pass this, and I'd secure my spot in the group. Fail, and I'd be living a social outcast. Desperate to be accepted and not fail, I was a ball of emotions. I was both excited and eager, but also pretty nervous and apprehensive. And as I got closer to the group, they all turned, and what seemed to me to be in unison surround sound started laughing at me for looking like a cowboy in my denim jacket. Shame and embarrassment hit me like a ton of bricks, and <laughs> I just wanted to find somewhere to hide. I did my best to laugh it off, but my mind was frantically figuring out how I was still going to pass this trial. And I learned two important lessons that day. First, never ever wear a denim jacket. And second, rejection was painful. I interpreted that reaction to mean that if I wanted to be accepted and fit in, I was going to have to be different than I was. And doing that was going to become my priority so that I didn't have to experience that pain again. What I didn't know was this conti was continuing to shape the relationship I had with myself. One was, that was built on a belief that I wasn't good enough, that I was broken and needed fixed, and where I used self-judgment and criticism as habits to make sure I met expectations. Interestingly, it was also shaping my future relationship with food. Consider these questions, and you can just answer them in your head. Have you ever struggled with weight or your body image? Have you ever felt out of control around food, as if you just couldn't resist eating? Have you ever felt guilty or stressed or ashamed after eating? And have you tried to resolve that by starting a new diet, cutting carbs, or restricting your food in some way? And yet, how many of you are still struggling despite that? Speak to anyone, and you'll realize that these behaviors are quite common. I'm personally very familiar with all of them. For years, like many of you, I struggled with my relationship with food and my body. And what I found for me was that food was not the problem. I don't think we should be focusing on why we're eating. I think we should, we should be focusing... Uh, sorry, I don't think we should be focusing on what we're eating. I think we should be focusing on why we're eating. And to understand why we're eating and heal the relationship we have with food, I think we first need to understand and heal the relationship we have with ourselves. That move after my parents' divorce was the first of many. And each time, I got better at people-pleasing, and yet more disconnected from myself. I'd repress my feelings and thoughts and needs, fearing the judgment of others, when in reality, I was judging myself the hardest. So even the subtlest of rejections from my classmates triggered this people-pleasing tendency, and I was ready to behave in line with expectation. As I got older, this informed my relationship with food, as I tried desperately to prove my worth by tightly restricting my diet and yet failing miserably to maintain what I perceived as a necessary restraint and willpower to stick to those restrictions, seemingly confirming my belief to myself that I wasn't good enough. I remember berating myself for eating a sandwich when I believed carbs were bad. The degree of guilt and shame and remorse I felt Like, would have made sense if I had killed somebody's dog. <laughs> But I hadn't. I had just eaten a sandwich. And consider for yourself, how willing are you to judge and criticize yourself for eating the wrong or bad foods? 
perhaps food is not the problem. And the answer, not going to be found in a diet. And when we're swimming in shame and self-loathing and inadequacy, food can provide that momentary relief from self-judgment. And when we eat to escape unwanted emotions, it can feel as if we're out of control. One of the brain's main priorities is to seek the pleasure in food to avoid the pain of emotions. So it can feel as if it causes us to eat, even against our own will. But it turns out, feeling out of control around food, feeling stressed or shame about eating, or tightly restricting our food, can all fall under the umbrella term of disordered eating. And disordered eating falls on a spectrum between a healthy relationship with food and eating disorders. And when we lack the ability to properly recognize, express, and regulate our emotions, we become more vulnerable to developing disordered eating as a coping mechanism. I had developed these behaviors to protect myself from the pain of emotion, pain of rejection. But spending years rejecting myself was actually so much more painful. And by 24 years old, I had spent a number of years numbing this pain with binge drinking and drugs and, of course, food. And as a result, I was the skinniest I had ever been. I had finally reached nirvana. Except that I hadn't. So many of us have lost weight only to find that the promise of weight loss doesn't deliver. I didn't start loving myself or feel more confident. I didn't feel more secure in my relationships. Life was definitely not better. I had spent all this time chasing external pursuits, hoping that was going to make me feel better. I was skinny, sure, but the pain persisted, and I felt empty, and I was tired and done. I was done hating myself and being at war with my body, realizing this was going to be the only one I had. I couldn't imagine wasting any more time fighting against it. And if you struggle with your relationship with food and your body, as I did, it's so important to be able to feel a sense of self-worth that doesn't involve a daily battle with food. To learn to treat yourself as if you mattered, because losing weight won't ever make you more worthy. Nor will confidence and self-acceptance ever be found in how we eat or what we weigh. The problem wasn't what I was eating, it was why. And it seems so clear to me that while we're focusing on eating more kale or less chocolate, we're missing out on understanding why we're eating. And I believe it's that that's going to lead us out of this disordered relationship we have with food. So that's what I did. I set out to understand why. Why did I feel out of control around food? because I created the habit of using food to solve for my emotions. Why was I willing to berate myself for eating a sandwich? Because I was attempting to stave off my feelings of unworthiness. And why, no matter how thin I got, I never felt content. Because my relentless self-criticism kept me feeling not good enough. The solution to my disordered relationship with food was not to focus solely on food or what I was eating, but to work on healing the relationship I had with myself that had me turning to food in unhealthy ways. And how I did that is something I could talk about all day. My journey was messy, and it was winding, but it started with a decision to learn a new way to relate to myself and to food. And the things I've learned, I believe, can help anybody create a better relationship with themselves, food, and their body. And it's three really life-changing practices. Firstly, learning to reconnect with ourselves. So all of the coping mechanisms that no longer serve me, like the people-pleasing and the dieting, it had to stop 
so that I could experience what was real for me and get to know who I was when I wasn't trying to be liked. It also means reconnecting with our physical experience. By simply asking ourselves, am I hungry, it helps you to decipher between physical and emotional hunger, which means we're also required to learn the skill of processing emotions without eating. Really, reconnecting with ourselves provides an antidote to the external chaos because we learn to meet our own physical, emotional, and spiritual needs, which creates an internal sense of ease and confidence, which means we don't need to rely on external validation. Second is to practice self-acceptance. So the people-pleasing, the emotional eating, and even my feelings of unworthiness. I accepted it all as part of the experience of being me. It's part of the experience of being human, really. And acceptance is the act of consent. And the spiritual teacher Eckhart Tolle guides us to accept the present moment as if we had chosen it. By simply shifting our thoughts about our body from ones of criticism to something neutral like, this is my body. You are acknowledging the present moment as it is and moving towards a state of acceptance. The thing about acceptance, though, is that it is not complacent, nor is it passive. It requires action and a lot of effort, but it's also one that helps you stop the constant battle and starts to create space for the internal peace that we're all so desperately seeking. And finally, deciding who we want to be. I wanted to be a woman who treated herself with understanding and compassion. I wanted to be a woman who believed that she was worthy of belonging just as she was. A woman who was willing to sit with her shame and loneliness and even unworthiness without trying to escape it. I wanted to be a woman who stopped trying to take up as little space as possible and started taking up all of the room she could, which is one of the reasons I stand in front of you today. All of our power comes when we make decisions about our lives, and deciding intentionally who we are becoming is the answer to fulfillment that doesn't require food. My experience has made me believe deeply that healing our relationship with ourselves can create true ease and freedom around food. For me, I no longer needed to use food to prove my worth or numb my emotions. So food becomes just food again. I finally felt free of the agony of low self-worth that made me feel as if I needed an escape through food. And an added bonus, I was able to start wearing denim jackets again. And I want to invite you now to imagine a future for yourself, one where you treat yourself as well as you do your best friend, one where you're able to show up unapologetically yourself, one where you allow yourself to risk and fail and still decide to have your own back, and one where you have finally healed your relationship with food. And I want you to know that that is all possible for you when you decide to focus on why and not what. Thank you.